Hey everyone, it's a very special day personally for me here today because today we get to unveil our latest Master Wu Studios Chow Jo clay pot, but this one is even more special because this one is a collaboration between Master Wu and Mayleaf. We have been working to create our own unique design. It's called the Wu X ML Lantern and we're gonna be unveiling it for you and I hope that you enjoy the aesthetics. It's been a labor of love trying to design our own Chow Jo clay pot. I've done many videos regarding Chow Jo clay, all about what the clay is good for compared with other clay types. We've done unboxings with Master Wu videos before. I'll put links to all of those in the description below if you wanna find out more about Master Wu and about the clay. Um, but this one is more about hopefully appreciating the aesthetics of this pot and we're gonna be doing its first inaugural brew. As I said, I have tested a sample of this, but we tweaked it a little bit. So this is the first time I'm testing the actual finished one. So I have in front of me the Nafu. This was the latest Master Wu pot that we got in. A delightful, delightful pot. We also had in this gourd shape, pear shaped pot. We also had in a shisha. And the timeless Master Wu original Amazing, amazing pot. All of these pots are incredible. The clay is exemplary in all of them and the stylings are incredible with the signature Master Wu style tips, which is this very unique, slender, pointed tip with that sort of rounded effect as well. He doesn't have it on all of his pots, but for most of his pots, he has that styling. Okay, so are you ready? So the way that this worked was uh, Master Wu keeps on sending us obviously new designs, new ideas in terms of what he's planning. And um, I kind of got involved as I tend to do and thought, you know what, it'd be great if we could just sort of create a unique, slightly edgier styling, edgier design. A bit risky, I know. So I'm going against the sort of the classics here, trying to create a new design. Um, so I sent Master Wu some drawings and some sort of collages, um, and he, we went back and forth and he sent me pictures. And we came upon this design together. Here it is. I'm gonna take the, uh, the string off so it comes with a bag, certificate, and cloth. Here we go. This is it. This is the Wu X ML Lantern. I hope that you like it. So what we did here is we, we looked at trying to create an interesting body shape where you had the sort of the, the curved shape, outward curved shape of the original pot, which we love, but instead of it also sort of having a, a lovely, but you know, more gentle curve this way, we wanted a little bit more edge to it. So as you can see here, we've brought that in. So it goes out and then comes in and then goes out again. And I think that that is a really interesting sort of profile, interesting shape. And also the knob on this, we wanted to make sure it was grippable, you know, so you weren't gonna slip, but that it had a little bit more of a sort of, again, that feeling of sort of out and in. So it mirrors the pot, so out, in, out, and then, Again, here you've got this sort of interesting sort of out and then in uh, and then flat on the top because you want to be able to put your finger on to stop the uh, flow if necessary. I told him to go to town with the tip and he certainly has done that. A very slender tip, really, really fine, fine tip. Again, similar to his uh, Chow Jo original, you can see here, but just more slender, more sharp looking. I really, really love it. Um, and also if you look here, this little curve going on here, this is something that we really liked. So again, sort of out to in to out, just a good flow, edgy, but still with a flow. That's what we wanted. Uh, we also wanted a nice chunky handle. I like a nice chunky handle here. I don't like handles that are too sort of fine. It feels like they could slip too easily. So we, again, mimicked most of his other pots. He also, they also have that, that styling with that uh, chubby, handle on the top, but this one is a little bit smaller, so it fits in with the overall look. 
The capacity was something that was very important to me as well. So capacity on this is 100 mil, there or thereabouts, but pretty much 100 mil. So I wanted a pot that was for me, the most sort of universal size that I use regularly. 100 mil, I use 70 mil a lot when I'm brewing solo. 100 mil I like for two people brewing. And it's just great because you can, you can get enough capacity to share brews with people comfortably, but you're not having to use too much leaf um, when you are brewing your tea. So I have in front of me some Shingren Dansong, Almond Blossom Dansong. This is one of those teas that has sort of flown under the radar a little bit because we haven't had the opportunity to um, do a video about it. But this is um, a delightful almond flavored uh, Dansong. When I say flavored, it's all natural. It's just the, the natural aroma of the tree, the Shingren cultivar. So this, uh, we've been looking to get a Shingren in for a while, I have to say. And my, the tendency that I've noticed is that Shingren tends to have a great sort of uh, uh, opening taste, but can be a little bit thin in the mouth. So we wanted something that was thicker. We've been hanging around for a bit. We finally found this one, made sure that it was baked at least twice. So this was baked twice to accentuate the mouthfeel and the more warm notes in the tea. So what do you think? Let me know what you think of this pot. It is a bit of a risk to try to sort of design our own pot. I am certainly not an expert in pot design or ceramics. And I know that, you know, there are people out there with many, many, many more years of experience and uh, craft at doing it. But I sat down and did this sketch and I, I truly really love it. I mean, I would say that because it is my design, but I do think it is a, it's not so different that it looks gimmicky. I think it still has some classic stylings and it's sort of borrowing a sort of collage of different stylings that we've seen in the past, but to sort of give it a good edgy flow to it. Right, so we're gonna put hot water in here. I am uh, not, uh, I've sort of found that I don't really need to prepare these pots. I would advise you probably do, but we have so many of these pots uh, and I've sort of tested them doing uh, the, the pre-brew uh, where you basically put the pot into boiling water or you pour boiling water several times in. I think it's a good idea to do that generally, but I've noticed if you don't do it, it doesn't make a big difference. I can't really taste the difference to the, uh, to the, the actual tea. We're gonna see how it pours. Right, so let's just see what the pour is like on it. I'm gonna move this out of the way. It's a very sharp tip as you can see. Let's see if I can actually, you know what I'll do? just so that we get a better angle here. I'll put it directly here, and hopefully you can see the pour. Hope you can see that. Now, if I put my thumb on it, ready, go. Oh yeah. Very tight fitting lid. You can see I've got ultra control there. That's the end of that. Let me bring this back. Right, let's put in this Shingren. Nice wide opening as well. I like pots that have a nice wide opening for uh, adding your tea leaves so you're not having to spill too many. Let's give this a smell. Oh, every time I smell this tea, it reminds me of the same thing. Taiwanese butter pineapple cake. So if you've ever been to Taiwan and you've had those little square um, cakes made stuffed with pineapple and they have a buttery texture. It's just exactly that. It's one of those flavor notes that just hits the spot is exactly that. Okay. All right, give it a quick rinse. Yeah, the pour is flawless, beautiful pour. And have a sniff. Oh, very bright and fruity considering that it is a, uh, that it is a Shingren or almond blossom. I'm still getting the butteriness, but it has very lemony smell. In the tasting notes, I wrote lemon meringue pie. 
an apple puree, I think. And that's very much there, very bright, very tart, very um, zingy on the nose. Mm. So we're gonna heat that up, or oh, this tea boat is probably not oh, just about enough for a rinse. I was so excited when I, when I collected this. Uh, when I first saw the sample, I loved it. Just wanted a bit more oomph on the, the, on the tip. Uh, you know, we wanted it to be even sharper. Um, and Master Wu has certainly uh, worked the magic. His studio just puts out some incredible, incredible teaware. Let that brew. I love that little meniscus that forms at the tip and then you see it get sucked back in as the leaf starts to absorb the water. It's one of those joyous little details in the tea uh, brewing process. When you have these very, very fine pots, you see as you pour it up and you put that lid on, it spurts out the excess water and you get this meniscus, this bubble of, of fluid that uh, sits um, on the opening of the spout and then you see it slowly deflate and then get sucked back in. Okay. Again, if I put my thumb on it, look at that. Yeah, sharp. But I would expect nothing less. Okay, take a look at the color of this beautiful golden liquor. I'm not gonna do a full tasting on this, but I thought I would, since it's a dance song, which suits perfectly, of course, Chow Chow Clay, I'd give it a taste today. And now you do get a lot more of the um, milky, creamy, notes it's less of the sort of um baked almond frangipan note of a duck shit dance song um but it's more in that region so you're getting more milks fruity milks again in my tasting notes i said strawberry milk ah oh, and the mouthfeel is lovely and thick but give you giving uh, you a lovely um, mineral zinginess on the sides of the tongue, which, which is not actually that drying. It's, it's just a very, um, it's more like a flavor than a texture. The apples are still there, of course, uh, cooked apples and that vanilla butteriness, butter biscuits. Mm. An amazing, amazing tea. As I said, I'm not gonna do a full 10 step tasting, but it is a great tea and you should check it out if you're interested in trying a different Dan Song. So there you have it. I wanted to introduce you to the latest in the Chow Jo collection at Mayleaf, but probably the most special one to us because it's a collaboration, Wu XML. Lantern. The reason why we called it a lantern is it sort of looks a little bit like it's got that flatter design. It sort of looks like a sort of genie's lamp a little bit. And um, we have 20 of these little babies that have been made for us. If they sell well, then we'll try and get Master Wu to do some more. Uh, but currently we've got 20. We had 21. Master Wu always makes one for me. So 20 in stock if you're interested in picking up the ML design. I personally love it. I hope you do too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.